So I've gotten a lot of requests over the years about how to make sauerkraut because I recommend people eat sauerkraut a lot for uh, gut bacteria. It really helps to nourish your gut. We know that a lot of health comes from the gut, so uh, that's a good place to start when you're trying to transform your health and get to uh, be a very healthy place, whether that's uh, weight loss or um, digestive issues that a lot of people suffer with or whatever the case may be. Uh, getting your gut health in better shape uh, helps with everything. You have one of those small hinges that swings big doors. So uh, it's very simple, but it, um, I found myself explaining it to people a lot how to do it. Um, so I thought I'd make this video and we'll put it on our YouTube channel and uh, that way we can just uh, have you check it out any, anytime you want to. The recipe is very complicated, has two ingredients, and uh, here they are. Um, I, I hate to watch a video on YouTube about something and they spend the first you know, 15 minutes like getting ready to do the thing that you want to know how to do. So I have um, pre-chopped the uh, cabbage. I bought three cabbages, but in cutting them up, I think two is going to be uh, plenty for my vessel, which is glass jar, glass that's not made in China. Um, Nothing against China, but uh, that glass tends to be a little lower quality. Maybe have some lead in it, some stuff that you don't want leaching out into your sauerkraut. So um, find you a good urn or a glass jar of some sort. You can't do this in metal. So um, that's what we're going to use there. So we have our pre-chopped cabbage, uh, our extra cabbage because I bought three and I don't think I'm going to need but two. Um, sometimes three is enough. Uh, if they're smaller, but uh, one of these was very large, and so I think two is going to be plenty. So, uh, the first ingredient is the cabbage. Um, so, uh, I weighed this cabbage after I cut it up and, and got the stalk out and all that kind of stuff, and I got about seven pounds of cabbage here. So, what you want to do is you want to use a half of a tablespoon per pound of cabbage. So, we're going to do seven half tablespoons of salt in our mixture. I just happen to have a half tablespoon right here and some salt. This is uh, Himalayan pink salt, my favorite salt of all salts because it's got the minerals and stuff in it. So we're gonna just do, um, we're gonna do four over here. And then we're gonna do three over here because this bowl is a little bigger than this bowl. And they're all gonna co-mingle here in just a bit anyway. Okay, so there are seven half tablespoons of Himalayan pink salt and our cabbage. Okay, now what we're going to do is uh, what they call bruising the cabbage. So, um, and literally, you're just squeezing it up, just kind of breaking it a little bit. And um, I got this recipe from a guy named Sandor Katz. You can, you know, you can look him up or whatever, uh, but he's kind of a fermentation guru kind of guy. Uh, I, I was at uh, with a uh, organic growers conference in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina with my daughter Savannah. And we went and, uh, and saw this presentation and uh, he was uh, showing us how to do this. And, and um, it's, a, it's a, a great food to have around. You want to kind of just keep some in the fridge as like a condiment, just have a couple of spoonfuls of it a day. It's kind of a tangy taste to it. You could put it on a hamburger patty. You could just use it as like a little side item, like a little snack during the day or whatever the case may be. Um, as you squeeze the cabbage, you'll feel it kind of kind of lose a little bit of its toughness. It kind of gets, uh, gets a little wiltier and uh, just want to mix in that salt real good. Like I said, kind of just bruise the cabbage. After we get it bruised up, we're going to make every attempt to get all this cabbage in that jar there. And uh, every time I make this, I look at the cabbage and I look at the jar and I think, I think I got a little too much cabbage. But as you put it in there and pack it down and put it in and pack it down and put it in and pack it down, you'll begin to see that it, uh, it goes in there pretty good. So I'm going to come over here to bowl number two now and kind of bruise this up a little bit. And, uh,
good hand upper body workout as well. So, get our cabbage all stirred up and bruised up. And this just kind of opens up the cabbage and the salt then is going to draw the moisture out of the cabbage. We're going to put a Tupperware thing up under this because over the next two weeks, as this bubbles and bubbles and does its thing, um, it'll probably bubble over the top of the jar. And we're actually going to leave it out, sitting here, just out, not refrigerated or anything, uh, with a piece of um, cheesecloth over the top to keep critters out, but um, and just let it sit and for two weeks. And pretty, you'll see it start to bubble, and that is the, that's the fermentation process, right? Oxidation, getting uh, getting going. There. So that's pretty pretty good and bruised up. So now we're going to take our cabbage and our bowl, and we're just going to stuff it down in here. As usual, it looked like I was not going to be able to get all the cabbage in my jar, but I did, in fact, get all the cabbage in there. And we've got a little room at the top there for the cabbage juice to rise up there. And for the first time ever, I am going to have to add a little, a little water to it because it's not quite covered up there. Cover it up in water. Just add just a little bit of water to the top just to top it off there. And that's basically it. A weight. You gotta have a weight to sit down in here. Some people will get like a little saucer of some kind of whatever, but uh, this is a rock I actually found in a, a river a long time ago. <laughs> it's a good clean rock. So I put that in there as my weight. And that helps to just keep the weight down on the cabin and keep it covered up there and uh, just keep it from floating around so much. Then we put our cheesecloth and our rubber band on top there. And now I'm just going to sit this over here and let it sit. And so what will happen over the next couple weeks, or the next couple days, you'll start to see bubbles coming up and it'll bubble and like I said, we're going to grab this little deal here and actually set it in here because this will bubble, actually bubble over over these next couple of weeks and you don't want to make a big mess. So we'll uh, let that go for um, at least two weeks. You can let it go a little longer than that if you want to, but usually within two weeks it's, it's about done its thing. And you can, um, then you can just put it, set it in the fridge and eat on it as you want to. Um, I've never canned any sauerkraut, but I think you can can it. But usually you'll eat it up about faster than you would need to can it anyway, because you want to be eating a little bit every day. And um, that's how you make sauerkraut.